All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We are gonna continue with our adding and subtracting. And just a reminder, this is a calculator-free zone here for this chapter. Uh, hopefully you're like that little baby right there, just chilling, happy, you're enjoying this, you're doing well, you're cruising along. And then uh, you're thinking, okay, rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Oh my goodness, they're fractions. That just means anything can be a fraction. Now you may be the baby on the right there. I'm not sure. Don't freak out. We are gonna add and subtract fractions. It's okay, even if you haven't enjoyed them in the past. Take a second, practice these. You can get better at these. You will get better at these and uh, and be able to do it no problem by the end of the section. So let's get into it here. Uh, so what were we doing before? We were doing our integers. So remember just our positive negative numbers and remember I didn't like these double signs were cleaned up. We were doing a keep change change here. So it was like a two plus seven. So hopefully we're pretty cool with these. Two plus seven is nine. Here's the difference. Now rational numbers just means anything that can be a fraction. So now we're gonna do fractions. And I know you've seen it before. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna put it with image with our, I'm sorry, with our positive and negative signs here. So I may give you something like, oh man, one half minus a negative one third. Don't freak out. It's cool. You don't have to make that that face on the front. It's a keep change changing. And I get this double sign. So I'm really gonna say, what is one half plus one third? So we're gonna keep our positive and negative signs in there as we work on adding and subtracting them. So to get us rolling, just to review some fractions, don't write this down, just check it out. Let's start getting our brain in fraction mode here. Um, I like to think of a dollar bill. There's one whole dollar right there. So that would be one whole thing. What am I gonna do with that? Well, I can break it into four quarters. There's four parts to it. That's why we call them quarters. They're 25 cents each, gives you that whole dollar. Oh, pretty cool. Uh, if I make that like in a little box, one whole thing, you can actually see me breaking this into quarters, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. So there it is. That is actually one whole thing or four fourths. Pretty awesome, huh? So that's called a fraction strip. If I have something like this, so what would this be then? This would be one of my four quarters right here or one fourth. This is four, all four of my quarters, which is just one whole dollar. So that's all fractions are. Don't freak out about it. It's okay. I know you may be intimidated, but you're a little bit older now, a little bit wiser. Uh, you're going to be good to go on these. And if you've always enjoyed them, cool. Just keep that train rolling. You're going to be good to go. So as I look at these fraction strips right here, and you already have to draw a couple fraction strips, <laughs> like saying that fraction strips. This first one we just did, this is what? This is one fourth right here. So this is one fourth. What is this down here? Well, I have this divided into fourths. This is two fourths. Let's pretend I wanted to add these bad boys together. So I'm just going to add them. One fourth and two fourths. Can I do that? Sure, not a problem. It's just easy to say, hey, I'm going to take this quarter. Ah, let's try it again. I'm going to take this quarter. There it is. I'm going to take this quarter and just put it right in here. Easy peasy, man. Those are nice. I've got one quarter plus two quarters. What do I have? I have three quarters or there's my three fourths right there. That's awesome. That is actually not bad. Hopefully you're the baby chilling on the happy baby. This is where it gets crazy. So if I have my one fourth up there, I can see this one fourth. Is this broken into quarters? No, this is the problem now. What I break it into, I've got one, two, three, four, five. This is actually fists. I actually have two fists. Now we don't have a 20 cent piece uh, with American currency. I don't have that 20 cent piece right there uh, to add these. So they're not the same thing. I can't just drag my quarter and put him in there because he doesn't fit. These are all worth 20 cents. He's worth 25 cents. This is a bummer. This is when you may want to make that face. What do I do? So that's okay. First, we got to make sure we're cool with like denominators. So hopefully these are great. You're hopefully going to be chilling like that happy baby. What does like denominators mean? Well, the bottom of the fraction is the denominator. So if you look at all these, the bottom is always the same. So adding fifths is no problem or before quarters or sevenths or eighths, not a problem. So I drew a little fraction strip here. So and do we need it? Hopefully not. I can say I have two fifths plus three fifths. How many fifths do I have? I have three fifths right there. If you want to see it though, I could add these two together. So I could say, sure, let's add these two together right here. Oops, that's supposed to be a plus sign. I'm going to add these together. Two fifths plus my one fifths. I'll break this into fifths. And you can say, oh yeah, I'll just take the purple from the top. Oh, I have purple. Let me use purple. I'll take the two fifths from the top. Shade those bad boys in. I'll take that red boy from the bottom. Boom, there it is. I have three fists. You can see the three fists. So ideally, I like to move away from fraction strips. Use them if you need them, man. They're great. They're awesome. I want right answers. But hopefully, we can get to the point where it's like, oh, yeah, five sevenths minus three sevenths. Not a problem. I am just going to have two sevenths right there. So we're going to subtract. 
Can we do our same rules as before? Yes, we can. We can do it. So I know I've got eight, so I can easily add or subtract them. Remember, this is a negative. I'm a negative one eighth. I'm getting more negative. So just be careful as you get. Don't even worry about the bottom. Just think about that top part of the fraction. You're saying you're at negative one. You're getting more negative. So where are you going to be? You're going to be at negative six, and the bottom's going to stay eighths. So when the bottom is the same, just look at the top. What am I doing? I'm getting more negative. Can we reduce that bad boy? Sure. What is negative? 6 over 8, well, 2 divides them both. So let's clean that up a little bit. And I'm going to say it's negative 3 fourths. So I do want you to reduce these whenever possible. Uh, break them down to the simplest form. Awesome. So holy cow, what happens when we see that weird double sign? Remember, this is going to be our keep the same number, change, change, because the signs are touching. So keep, change, change. So you actually have to do a little writing there. So I like to rewrite it. I know I've, I've changed that to an addition problem. But let's see it, because now it's really nice. So when I change, change, I'm going to have 1 6 plus five, six, which is a total of six, six, which is that one hole, like that dollar bill that we had before with four fours. So don't freak out. We're still gonna do our same rules, same thing we were doing before, but instead of just integers, now we're gonna include rational numbers as integers and also fractions mixed in there. Awesome, I love it. So we're doing great. Now the other face. Let's take a look at the other side of the coin. So why is this so problematic here? Well, the problem is these shapes aren't the same size. So that's a problem here. So I need to make them the same size. So right here I have 2 thirds plus 1 half. Well, can I make them the same size? Yes, I can turn these into 6. So if I cut this in half again, if I break this bad boy into uh, thirds, see I can break up my fraction strip again. So I can actually convert them into different numbers. So yes, that was 2 thirds, but now what is it? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is actually 4 6. And when I broke this into, this is 1, 2, 3. This is 3 6. So now I'm cool. Not a problem. I can say 4 6 plus 3 6. These are the problems that make me happy when the bottom, when the denominator is the same number. Not a problem at all. So I actually can add these together and say 7 6. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna go ahead and leave. This is an improper fraction for now. If you wanna make it a mixed number, you're more than welcome to say it's one and one six. I'm cool with that, but improper fractions don't bother me. Uh, as long as they're reduced, I'm pretty cool with that. Awesome, so that's what's gonna happen. Now, do I have to draw a fraction strip and try to make these squares the same size? Eh, that can get that can get troublesome. Let's just go ahead and do it without. So. If I want to subtract these, they're not the same denominator. They're unlike denominators, and you may not like these either. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we got to power through them. So I always look, can I turn the smaller number into the bigger number? Sure, does 4 turn into 8? Yeah, it turns into 8. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to times this by 2 to make it 8. Well, whatever you do the bottom, you got to do it to the top, or else it's not the same fraction. So I'm making everything twice as big here. So 2 times 3 becomes 6. 2 times 4 becomes 8. 3 fourths is really the same thing as 6 eighths. Well, why did I do that? Well, now I can subtract 3 eighths from it, which is awesome. That's my whole goal is that same denominator right there. These make me happy. So if I go ahead and do that, 6 eighths minus 3 eighths is 3 eighths. So you have to get common denominators or like denominators, and then you can go ahead and do your adding or subtracting or whatever it is. Awesome. Let's do it again. So take your time with these. You got this. So. I look at this, I know it's a hot mess because I'm subtracting and I'm a negative number up front here. But the real problem is I've got 5 and 2. So can 2 turn into 5? No, 2 cannot turn into 5. So i got to think of a number they both can be. So what numbers can uh, 5 be? 5 can be like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Let's goes on and on and on. What can 2 be? 2 can be 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, blah, 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 blah. So we're looking for, these are called the multiples. We're looking for the smallest one. What is the least common multiple? Well, check it out. They both can be the number 10. They both can be 10. And maybe you can do that in your head. That's great. If not, write these all down. I want to turn these both into 10. So how do I turn 5 into 10? Well, I'm going to times it by 2. But whatever you do at the bottom, you got to do it to the top to keep it equal. So really, this turns into 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 5 is 10. And don't forget that negative. This is a negative 4 tenths. Awesome. Let's do the other one. So I'm going to subtract the next one. And I'm going to say, man, how do I turn 2 into 10? Well, I'm going to times it by 5. What do I do at the bottom? Do it to the top. So 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Now I've got those like denominators. Now I'm the happy baby. Woo, happy baby. 
And now I can work on the final step, which, which is building off what we just did. So I don't care about the bottom. I know it's going to stay tense. Once I have that common denominator, I know that's the size of them. So what do I have here? I have a minus 4, minus 5 more. I'm getting more negative, so this is going to be minus 9. Minus 9 tenths, or negative 9 tenths. All right, that's pretty crazy there, huh? So it's a lot of steps. I know you can make little mistakes there. Just take your time. Make sure everything's flowing and looking good. Let's do one more. So I've got a weird double sign with this. So before I even start, let's get to, I don't like this double sign. Let's clean it up. So instead of saying one-fourth plus a minus or plus a negative, this is just a subtraction problem. So it's easier for my brain to think about this, one-fourth minus one-third uh, to see what you get here. Now let's go ahead and try to get that like denominator. So four and three, three can't turn into four. Maybe you can do it in your head. What number can they both become? A lot of times you can just take them and multiply them. Like what is three times four? Oh, it's 12. 12 is the smallest number they both can become. If not, list the multiples. Four can be eight, can be 12, can be 16, blah, blah, blah. Any one of these will work as long as it matches three, which is three, six, nine, 12, 15, and blah, 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 forever and ever and ever, ever and ever and ever. And you can see, oh yeah, 12 is the first number they have in common. So this is the first time they are the same number. So if you pick the smaller one, you don't have to reduce at the end, which is really nice. Uh, so let's do it. How do I turn four into 12? Well, I'm gonna times it by three, but you can't just times part of a fraction. That's weird. You gotta times the whole thing by three. Everybody's getting three times bigger. So this will actually turn into three times one is three over 12 minus, what do I do to make 3 12? I got times it by 4. Whatever I do up here times this by 4. So on bottom is going to be 12. 1 times 4 is 4. And then there's my fraction. So all that work was to set it up to make it a happy baby. So first make it a happy baby problem. Then you can actually do it. So when I actually subtract these bad boys, I got 3 minus 4. I only care about the top. I know the bottom is still 12s. That's not going to change. I'm in 12s. What is 3 minus 4? Well, 3 minus 4 brings me down to negative 1 negative one twelfth. That's it. So you can do this. I know you can do it. Don't freak out. I can hear a little groan when I said adding fractions in there, even though it's a video I heard it. It's okay, man. Just power through. You got this. Take your time on the practice. Do as many as it takes. Work with your teacher. Get this hammered out. Good luck on the match check.